And if you think you're going to get somebody for $30,000 who, you know, uh, is going to understand how to take care of all your networking, uh, you know, deal with virtualization, um, get you out of a pinch if you actually have a uh, disaster recovery incident, knows about information, uh, knows about IT security, you know, forget it. You're not going to get all of that out of one person. So today we are talking about in-house or outsourced IT. Mm. And that's something that I know we've had we've had conversations about several times um not even just ourselves but um others have have asked that question um is it better for a company to have in in-house IT to hire their own IT technician or to outsource it? Uh, with a with an MSP, a managed service provider. So, um, to start out with, what are the primary factors that should influence your decision? Obviously, I have a bias, right? Okay, I I operate an organization, a company here where we actually do outsource IT for people, and I do think that's a very good option. But there's a couple things you need to look at. You know, um. I'd say size sometimes plays uh, a factor into it, right? Uh, cost is going to play a factor into it. And I'll, I, we can dive deeper into these two things as well. But the uh, the third thing, uh, which is actually, the, I think the first thing we should talk about is, you know, like what's your, your actual experience with information technology as a business owner? Like, are you prepared to actually manage your own, uh, like, internal IT staff? Um, and, and so experience has a lot to do with it, too. Because if you don't know anything about IT at all, and now you're hiring somebody for that part of your business, uh, you know, you're, you're spending a lot of money because hiring a person is expensive and you're hoping that that person is going to do what they ought to be doing, but you really have no way of holding them accountable. You don't, you really don't know necessarily, you know, what best practice looks like. Um, and so those are some, a few things that we should, you should, you should start with and, uh, take a look at like how much how much can you afford and, and how big is your organization? Does it really make sense to dedicate a full time person to this? I would say those are those are the things to start with. So that that makes a lot of sense. You don't know what you don't know, and then you're hiring right. someone to <laughs> to do that. So that's a big consideration. Um, but then, as you mentioned, cost. Uh, what mm-hmm. what are the cost considerations? What are the things that uh, a company, small or big, should be thinking about um, cost wise when de- de- deciding if they should go with in house or outsourced IT? Sure. So obviously, there's the person, and and the cost on that person can vary greatly depending on what you want that person to do, like what their skill set is. Uh, you know, there are people who are in information technology, right, and they're getting paid let's say a, a lower wage, they're making $30,000 a year because they're, they're sort of a tier one uh, beginning technician. Then you have, you have folks who are making six figures plus uh, in their position because of what they're capable of doing. So, you know, how much are you willing to spend? Cause the more you spend, the more you're going to get in most cases. Um, and if you think you're going to get somebody for $30,000 who you know, uh, is going to understand how to take care of all your networking, uh, you know, deal with virtualization, um, get you out of a pinch if you actually have a uh, disaster recovery incident, knows about information, uh, knows about IT security, you know, forget it. You, you're not going to get all of that out of one person. Plus, you know, are you going to ask them to do project management? Or are they going to be doing 24 hour support? You know, so the cost is the first thing is what's the person going to cost? Who do you need? Uh, second thing is there's software that goes into this, right? To organize your information technology process. You know, are you going to get a remote uh, monitoring and uh, management tool, an RMM? Are you going to get some network monitoring um, services? Are you going to get antivirus software? Um, you know, there's hardware costs and stuff in your IT environment that that are going to be considerations as well. Like, what is your what is your budget for IT look like? And do you have the money to buy all these pieces of software and do you have the experience to set them up as the person you're going to hire going to be able to set them up, you know, and then what's the time investment in this, you know, you've got human resource requirements, uh, you know, you're hiring, you're building a department in your company. 
So there's there's a lot that goes into that. Yeah, that's those are some some good considerations. Those are some weighty things. I mean, maybe you're just thinking in terms of cost. You're thinking, okay, I'm going to pay this person X X dollars an hour or X dollars a year, a salary of what whatever it is. But then, as you mentioned, the tools and the software that's needed for them to be able to to do their job. Um, that there's an expense behind that as well. Uh, and as far as if you actually use an MSP instead of using, um, instead of hiring someone on your staff, what are some of the ways that, or what are some of the cost considerations with that? Maybe some benefits to how that can save you some money or, or, um, maybe cost you more money depending on, on what you're, what you're looking at. Yeah. So, you know, there are um, so, some real savings that you get with an MSP because we already have all that software, right? We, we, we've we actually already invested in, in the infrastructure and we're spreading that cost out across, you know, uh, hundreds of customers or thousands of endpoints. Uh, and there's always that initial, you know, the, you get better pricing as you get scale. So we've already got all the tools. We're paying the lowest possible prices for those tools. Uh, and then you're benefiting from that. In addition to that, we have a lot of staff. You know, we don't just have one person. Okay, we've got a lot of different people. Some of them are experts in networking. Some of them are experts in security. Some of them are lower level technicians that are just there for customer service reasons. But you're getting, you're taking advantage of the the entire breadth of that experience, uh, and and you're getting that all together. All those different uh, individuals, all that different coverage right? You're getting all that software. You're getting people to manage those folks. You're also getting process with that, right? You know, how we handle tickets that come in and how quickly we handle them. What's our SLA? How do we do escalations? What do we do in these situations when this particular event occurs? So you're getting all that in in one price. Um, And, you know, with our MSP, we charge per person. Some other MSPs charge per device. Some other you know, there's different ways to do it, but the point is you kind of get a predictable cost. You, you know, it's going to either be per, you know, computer you, you buy, or, or like I said, in our case, it's per person who works in your company. So uh, it's easy to figure out what that cost looks like right now and what it's going to look like as you grow, or, you know, as you, uh, sh- if you were to shrink or, or lay off some staff, you can see that adjust and you, you get everything covered. So it generally speaking tends to be a better value uh, but what I will say is, you know, there are times where having your own information technology in-house makes sense. Uh, you know, I, I want to make sure I've said that because I, I do agree that sometimes it, it, it makes it makes sense to do that. What I've seen uh, make a lot of sense is actually having at certain at a certain size, having like one dedicated resource in your, your company that works with your MSB, right? Like actually having like a, a chief tech technical officer or CIO, or even if you just, you have one guy who is there to sort of put out little fires. If you've got like, you know, 150 users, for instance, if you have one guy on site, who's just there to run down the hallway to help somebody with their printer real quick, that, that can make sense. But, uh, uh, but ultimately the best value in my opinion is making sure that you're actually partnering with somebody who's already set all this stuff up and you get that economy scale. We talked about the knowledge factor we talked about the cost factor and then you, you kind of went into the scale and the size factor as well. Um, and you had mentioned that previously. Um, so, I mean, if you're some multi-billion dollar corporation and you can afford to, to hire, you know, an entire team, um, then that's dedicated to, you know, to one function. And that may make more sense than if you're, you know, a smaller company or a medium sized company, they can, they can afford to hire, you know, maybe one good, uh, uh, CIO or, or chief technology officer that can make sure their eye is constantly on, on the ball in terms of, uh, technology and security and that type of thing. Um, if it is, is that kind of my on the right lines yeah. with that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so when you're, when you're looking at, um, what it's going to cost you, what you're going to get for your money. So let's look at if you do hire one person. Uh, let's just say that person's forty-five to fifty thousand dollars. You know that person's going to go on vacation. They're going to get sick. 
They're not going to be there all the time. And let's look at the size of your overall organization, right? So that so you've got this resource that's not always available. Uh, and y- what percentage of your your total company size do they make up? Do you have five people? You just added a sixth person for your information technology. That's a big portion of your overall, um, you know, the, the, the overall payroll that you're you're paying out here. That's that's a big investment. You know, are, do you have 10 people? Again, it's that's a tenth of your payroll. Uh, is that really the right am- amount of money to dedicate towards this this limited resource? And that's before any software or before any sort of process, right? And that person's not available 24 by 7. So then when you get bigger, okay, does it make sense to hire somebody who's maybe more talented, maybe more skilled in terms of administration, who can actually uh, be your advocate uh, for your organization and choosing your IT provider and sort of managing things from a business perspective, well, maybe that makes sense. You know, once you've got 50 people or 100 people or 150, it just it depends on your organization. <clears throat> but if you get a CTO and that person is, you know, an advocate inside of your company, um, you know, and helping you with multiple different areas of your technology, just not not just your back office, which is like what we focus on, but maybe you've got a a production side as well. That can make a lot of sense to bring that individual in. But you still you still get this uh, want this coverage of you know twenty four seven. You want process. You know people who you know if 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 one of my guys goes on vacation, there's a bunch of other people there that are still watching the problems in your environment, answering your tickets and taking your phone calls. You know we're never gone. Uh, but your one employee is. So there's just a lot you got to look at in the pros and cons. Now, if you are a large company, like, you you, you know, you've got, uh, you know, 10,000 employees, you're, you're probably going to want to go ahead and insource your IT. Um, it's going to make sense to have your own team there. And you're going to have a bunch of uh, management, you know, supervisors, different levels uh, within that department that can take care of that. But again, if you're just a small, let's say you're somewhere between we'll say 10 and a hundred users, for instance, like it just doesn't, I don't think it really makes sense after a hundred, maybe, you know, uh, maybe it starts to make sense to have like a lower level person, but really you can go, you know, we've, we've, uh, worked with customers with 300, 400 users. They don't have any internal it staff works great. Yeah. That, you know, this is, an illustration because when we've had these conversations in the, in the past, um, one of the things you brought up that, uh, I hadn't thought about before, but, um, in terms of paying your staff, you're also talking about their, you're talking about their insurance. You're talking about, you know, their, their coffee and their cookies that are there in the <laughs> office. And, right. um, you know, if you're expecting to, uh, if you're expecting to, uh, uh, to, to hire someone for, you know, thirty thousand dollars, and and have them handle everything. It, it's it just doesn't make sense. It's it's almost like um, I know we've used the illustration of a boat um, or 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 doctor specialist. Like if you if you were if you if you own a canoe, you don't need to hire a staff for a canoe. You know, right. or, or if you have like a, a if you're sailing, it might be nice to um, you know you don't need to hire a crew for a sailboat, but you know, if you need repairs and stuff done to the, to the, to the boat, you want to take that into somebody. If you have a, you know, mm-hmm. you have a mega yacht, you know, you might want to hire a staff. You might want to have someone who's dedicated to, yeah. to looking at how certain things function. But, um, I know you have, a, you had a lot exactly. of great illustrations on, <laughs> on, on, yeah, on well, that. And you brought up the doctor one, right. And that's the one that comes back to me a lot because there are, I mean, it's very different, right, technology from medicine, but there's, you know, uh, what is similar between the two is that there are specializations in both in both fields. You know, the, the people who are really good at working on your network, th- that's different. What they know, that that whole part of technology is very different than the people who are working on your server infrastructure. I'm not, I'm not going to say there isn't some overlap. You know, the, a lot of them have some information with regards to the other person's work, but there really is – you know, you can specialize in either of these areas. Same thing with security. You know, that's a whole uh, branch of technology that you can spend your whole life pursuing and uh, achieve uh, all kinds of different certifications in. And it's just, it's nothing like, you know, what the person who's who's 
fixing your you know email problems is dealing with or your, your printer is very different. And so same thing with your doctor, right? You get your, you know, your general practitioner you go to who advises you, hey, go to this specialist or that specialist. And they all charge different rates, right? And the more specialized the skill, the more expensive, generally speaking, that skill is. So if you if you think you're gonna get somebody for, you know, thirty five, forty five thousand dollars that's going to be good at these specialization. It's just not, it's just not practical, right? You know, you're, you're talking your average salary for somebody in information technology is probably going to be around $60,000 a year. Right. And that's for sort of an all rounder. And that's here where we're at. Uh, it, you know, if you're out in California or on the East coast or something, West coast, East coast, that's going to be a lot higher. Um, and you know, you've got to ask yourself, you know, what would you pay an MSB and what would you get for that money? Besides all the coverage, you'd get those tools, you'd get that process, you'd get the management, the HR, the oversight, you know, you'd get a lot more. And you're not just getting IT staff, you know, like in, in the case of how we do things, you're also getting a, uh, an actual dedicated chief information officer, um, you know, for your organization, somebody who actually does work with you on a regular basis to actually look at your technology and help guide you down a path to success based on whatever your goals are, you know, um, you're getting um, the management of these people, right? You know, that middle, mid layer, you know, making sure you're getting project management, you know, you're getting mm -hmm. inventory and somebody who's actually making sure that, you know, your equipment's getting ordered and shipped on time and sent to the right place. So there's just so much more you're getting. And it's, it is usually generally speaking, if you've got, if you've got 20 to 50 uh, people in your organization, it's definitely going to be cheaper to hire an MSP than it is to hire a full-time uh, staff member. Gotcha. So with all that being said, let's, uh, maybe, maybe we could list a couple of pros and cons for, for either side. What, what would sure. some of the pros and cons be for either in-house or, or hiring an MSP? Yeah. So pros for in-house, right? You've got dedicated staff. There's no SLA, right? So this is somebody who is down the hall in a room and you can just, you know, say, Hey, I need a, I need you to help me right now. And that person probably can get up and help you right now. There's no, there's not, you know, you may not have to put in a ticket. You may not have to make a phone call. You may not have to wait a few minutes to get a response. You might be able to just grab them, get things fixed right this second. Maybe, <laughs> maybe as your internal staff grows, though, they're going to start operating more like an MSP too and say, eh, well, hold on a minute. We've got a lot of people we're working with, but you might have that as an advantage. Uh, you know, another thing is you, you've got a lot of control over how things are done, uh, with regards to the technology itself, if you want to get involved, uh, with that. And, and then again, the process, but, but the question you have to ask yourself there is how much do you know about information technology? Do you want to take that on? Do you really want to be involved in building your IT process? So lots of control, uh, again, really, really usually responsive, um, you know, not, necessary you know it's not cheaper unless you're big enough uh where you really are starting to get a full sort of dedicated staff then it, it'll it at some point it becomes more cost effective to have your own internal it but again that's really you know that's far down the road so there's there's the 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 pros to that right uh cons right cost uh you know like we already pointed out you're going to pay a lot more and get a lot less if you just in source that IT right off right off the bat, um, you know, and again those cons like we just mentioned, you're going to have to figure out uh, what your process is and you know what the what software you need. Uh, so the pros here for uh, you know outsourcing that IT again, you're getting professionals. They've already you don't have to build a department. They've built it all. Uh, they know what you need. Um, they do. They we see hundreds of environments. You know, many different companies, different routers, switches, firewalls, servers, desktops. We We've got a lot of experience with a lot of different equipment in a lot of different businesses. And we're able to apply that information, that knowledge and that experience in your environment. You got one guy, he's seen your stuff. Maybe he worked somewhere else before, but how much experience, how much exposure is he getting? How much new technology is, is he actually, you know, uh, being exposed to as well? Like what's the ongoing 
uh, training. You know, that's something we do, right? We're constantly training our people and introducing them to new things. We're uh, trying out new services. About every two years, we go through our stack and say, "Is this? Are these still the best tools to use within our business? Should we be using something else? You know, and is there is there something new here that we need to to incorporate?" So, you you really get a lot out of an MSP. Um, you get good value. You get great coverage, and it, you don't have to think about it. You're bringing in professionals to do it for for you. So obviously, again, I'm biased. I think it's a great thing to have in your business, but I really do think that the evidence bears out that this is the case. It's more affordable and you just get so much more. Awesome. Well, oh, but let me say this real quick. Downside, you know, downside. Uh, you're going to have to wait a few minutes when you put in a ticket, you, you know, because you, you, there's an SLA. You've made it a contractual agreement with the company and they're going to tell you, hey, when you put in a ticket, unless it's an emergency, you got to wait, you know, you got to wait an hour. Uh, you know, but then we'll get it fixed. You know, there's that also, you know, you have to go through the hassle of, of finding a trusted, you know, advisor in the first place, like a good MSP in the first place. And that can be difficult as well. So it's not all, all roses. There's work you have to put in and there are some compromises and trade-offs, but that's the gist. For myself and anyone else who's listening again, let's, let's make it simple. So we break down these things that we, we, we want to make sure at the end of the day, everyone understands and can make decisions even based off of uh, all the topics that we're talking about. So along those lines, let's make this simple. 30 seconds or less in-house or outsourced it. All right. So again, it depends on your size, your budget and your, your knowledge and understanding of information technology. If you're a very large company, okay, you've got a lot of money and you have a lot of experience or are willing to hire people with lots of experience uh, and pay them what, what they cost, hey, you can insource that IT and be very successful with it. If you're a smaller company, let's say under, you know, four or 500 people, then you're going to get a lot more value out of a managed service provider, out of outsourcing that IT to a professional. Just plain and simple, you, you're just going to get more.